You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, everybody. Cheryl Kay from Unleashed. Welcome. I hope everybody is doing well. Gather around. Get your your favorite pets and let's chat. Today's going to be a little bit of potluck. I've invited my friend Michelle Fern and we're just going to sit and talk about a few things. But before we start, I just want to remind you that my email address is Cheryl at PetLifeRadio.com and um, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be um, starting a Facebook page, and I think it would be super wonderful if everybody could upload pictures of their pets with the name on it, and I think that would be really something, and we could find out who our community has, lives with, loves, and protects. So today I want to talk about Daniel Boone. You know I have Daniel Boone. He's my main coon cat. Wait, 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 wait. Hi, everybody. This is Michelle Fern. Happy to be on Cheryl Kay's show. Okay, now you can go. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for being here. And where was I? Oh, I want to talk talk about... How'd you come up with the name, first of all? Because I was thinking of Davy Crockett, and when I looked at his tail, the first thing that came was Daniel Boone, which I like. I like that much better. But I wanted to remind our listeners, for the new people who are just checking in to, to meet me, that I have Daniel Boone, my main coon cat, and I have Miss Cheyenne, who's a regular little tabby, gray, and um, they are the perfect match. But Daniel Boone, because I haven't, have him, I haven't shaved him this year yet because the uh, groomer that I like closed and moved away, and I haven't found one that that I like as much because, you know, it's so stressful when you put them in the carrier and you put them in the car, they think they're going to VET. But once they walk into these groomers, I don't know what they're spraying the place with, but they calm down. And he absolutely loved going there. And she loved having them because, you know, they have these big, these big bushy tails. So I haven't done it yet. And I do brush him every day. I am relentless. But I've noticed that when he lies down on the carpet, you know, on either side, he gets these little, like, little tiny matted knots behind his ear. I thought it was like a growth or something. So I used the flea comb because it's got a little, you know, thin blade, and I brushed it and I brushed it, and that's fine. Now, the dentist doesn't have little knots, and he does that back thing, too. He lies on his back and does the, you know, it's like the Macarena dancing around a little bit on his back. But he never gets these little knots. I know what you're talking about. They, you know, they sometimes get the fur just because well, the dentist is a fur ball. But underneath, his hair underneath is longer. Anyway, I noticed the other day, and we're talking about within 24 hours, he lays on his back with his gotkas hanging out, you know, because it's hot. And I went to brush him the other day, and this is on his well, back. With his what hanging out? Gotkus. It's just it's an expression. Him. And I went to brush him, and he had a matted there. So it must be from the rug. I don't have many rugs in the house, but I happen to have one in the bedroom, and that's when I think. So I brushed, and I brushed, and I couldn't handle it. So I cut, and I cut, and it was fine. And I brushed, and I brushed, and I thought, wow, I got it. Later on in the afternoon, I happened to pet him. And I found another one. I mean, it's hysterical. And I brush him religiously. It's, could you think it could be gravel from when he does his, his business? No, it's not. No. I know what it is. It's not a hair from... It's like when we were kids and we had long hair and we went to sleep and we, you know, moved our heads on our pillows. We had knots. You know, I think it's got to be from the carpet and him moving around. You know, it's hot. But, you know, as soon as I find a really good groomer with references and that I think that he'll like. I mean, I'll try somebody once. I will bring him because I do like to get him shaved twice a year. You know, I think it's hot now, you know. I mean, no matter where you live, the temperatures are soaring. And even though you have AC, he likes getting shaved. You know, the lion's cut. And I think if you can find a groomer that will do a cat without putting them under. Oh, never. That's even I better. would never. I have gone into this groomer when they were still open and like peeked in and he was fine. He was loving this. You know, they just put him on like a little table. They do put 
like a little harness around him. But he, why would he move? He's being brushed. He's being, you know, fancied up. I never saw anything else. I mean, I have bathed my cats before. It is not a pretty picture. You know, they they just freeze up and they don't like it at all. Well, I had Wall on my show and they make fabulous clippers and scissors. Um, there's, it's spelled W-A-H-L. And they did a dirty dog contest where proceeds went to shelters, all this cool stuff. And so I attempted to cut Nikki, who's a Havanese, and he needed a cut. And let me say my significant other was so upset. He said, you did a bad job, now put it back. Yeah, I go, right. what do you mean put it back? It's it's cut off. He's, he's more comfortable. He, it's not a show dog. Put it back. So I learned my lesson. I'm going to stick with Mr. Z. I'll do whatever hit cut I want. The Nikki, that's not, that's the significant other. He could handle that. Not but me. I mean, you, I mean, you, you have a cat also. The dentist. I, yeah. I, I cut their, I cut their nails. I mean, you have to be careful because there's a vein in there and you know, you got to wear glasses or really a good light, but I, I definitely cut their nails. I don't do his nails. He has a scratching thing. He could do his own stuff. Yeah, I don't have one of those. But they don't they don't go anywhere. They don't scratch anything. I do have a little mat that I that I've had for a number of years and that really I think is a good product. It kind of looks like a placemat and it's got a zipper in the back and you put um I was going to say kitty litter. No. Um catnip, catnip in it and Daniel Boone loves to lay on it. I mean, you know, I have a toy basket of all their toys, and he likes to bring toys out to the patio where he, where they hang out during the day, and he always puts ones on the mat. And, you know, I guess they smell the, the, um, the catnip and everything. I mean, I have catnip, I'm ashamed to say, must be 30 years old in a jar. That's how great this Time stuff is. Time to get some new ones. I do it's have like new. It's like having, I catnip do. is like, 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 it's like, you know, us having a drink. Can you ma- well, wine, okay, 30 years old. Wine, certain wines are meant I to I have be it old, in a glass but- jar. And if I open up the glass jar of the old one and the glass jar of the modern day one, they're going to love me old one. It's it's real stuff. I, I don't know. I mean, you know, I give uh, Vintage Daniel. Vintage catnip. Yeah. What, what a thing. Right. Who we knew? should sell it. Daniel Boone loves, at night, they get treats. And Daniel Boone loves catnip. I mean, if he could swim in it, he would. You know, he gets a little crazy, but he loves it. You know what? Michelle, hold on one moment. Let's go to a break, and we'll be right back. See you on the other side. Okay, time to call off the dogs. We'll be back with more biting topics right after we kibble a little with our sponsors. It's designerpetsweaters.com. Hand-knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom-knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports-themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit designerpetsweaters.com to order your four-legged fashions today. Large or small, we fit them all. Designerpetsweaters.com. She was thrown out of a pickup truck. Somebody threw him out of a car and shattered his leg. They found her walking on the streets. Many have been abused. Malnourished, eating garbage. Scabs, itching, licking, missing fur. There's this commercial on TV that the ASPCA does. They want you to send in $19 a month for a dog in the shelter. I think you should go and adopt a dog from the ASPCA. And then get that dog on Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. You don't need to spend thousands on vet bills. Their answer is nutrition. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. When you rescue a dog, you've got to feed them right for life. Every rescue deserves at least 90 days of Dynavite. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. Dynavite is nutrition. Dynavite for life. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Are you having trouble getting the word out about your new pet product or invention? Let Whitegate PR open the gate to your marketing and public relations efforts. We've been specializing in public relations in the pet industry for over a decade. From press releases to media relations and publicity 
to pet trade shows and launch events to social media, the pet-friendly team at WhiteGate PR has you covered. If you listen to the wise words of Bill Gates, he says, if I had $1 left, I'd spend it on PR. Learn more at WhiteGatePR.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> We're back, and once again, I want to thank my friend Michelle Fern for joining us. Today is pot luck. We're going to talk about a little of this, a little of that, and now I think we should talk about the people who walk their dogs and don't pick up after them. Oh. I cannot stand that. Okay, pet peeve. Hate that. I hate that. I have literally. I always have either poopy bags from, I've got yes, I hope several on, yeah. on my show. The ones that come in a roll, I buy them. I even have pink ones or, you know, if, if I have extra, you know, plastic Communities bags today store. even have, you know, outlets where you could pull it. You know, if, if the community, wherever you live, allows pets, they have a stand where you could pull out. I mean, it's a plastic bag. What is the big deal? You exactly. put your hand in it. But there's so many it. people. I mean, there's sometimes, you know, number two is not pick up a bowl, as I say. But most of the time, it is. And it's rude as hell when people do not pick up. Yeah, because, you know, people walk and people are wearing sandals. Kids are outside. I mean, it's just, it's not safe. People are barefoot. Yeah. But, but it's... It's so obvious. I mean, I live now in a small community and I see people, you know, they're, oh, I'm, I'm a dog lover or this, this, this. If you're not a true dog lover, you're not a true dog person if you don't deal with the poop. That's and those are the I same say. people who don't gotta care. You got to deal with the poop. You right. got to pick it up or, you know, I've had times I had to go back because sometimes Nikki does the horse thing. You know, he poops, he moves, he poops, he moves. And I don't know why. But I usually take at least two bags. Sometimes I have the whole roll on one of those little, um, you know, a little holder. And sometimes I just walk him in an area where I know it's, you know, adjacent to the studio. So I could just pick it up with one of our scoopers later on. But people that are obviously in front of homes just walk in their dog and let them poop. Yeah, Don't I, worry I, about it's it. It's incredibly rude. And those are probably some of the same people. I don't want to accuse everybody who don't care about their dogs jumping up on somebody or having their dogs bark. Living next door to an animal who barks is like going insane. It really is rude. I mean, somebody rings your doorbell, your dog barks to let you know they're there. That is fine. That is communication. But an animal that just barks and barks and barks and is not, you know, I mean, you got to train a dog. Well, you know what? Barking like that incessantly, it's usually a sign. And Ardmore has a great show on Pet Life Radio, Oh Behave. And a I sign know of Dr. What? Jeff has, has answered these questions. If a dog is barking like incessantly, then there's something wrong. The dog is either so lonely or it needs food, it needs water, it needs to go out, it needs something. Because a, a dog's bark is kind of... They can't talk, right? They can't say, hey, right, you know, right. something's wrong with me or, hey, you know, there's something the matter is when they constantly bark like that. And that gets on to another peeve. I really, 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 really hate when people walk their dogs off leash and they say, oh, my dog won't do ev- yeah, anything. It's an animal. Because Hello. An animal could run in the street. I don't mind always, at a dog park. Even dogs that are working dogs and their hand they're trained i mean they're trained a whole like crazy there's a lot of training but they're leashed well i have some friends who are afraid of dogs and i've went to homes with them and these dogs are very harmless but it's their fear so but, when they see a dog that's unleashed <laughs> In their house, even if it's their house, I mean, when somebody new and you're welcoming somebody in your home, I don't like it. I have friends that I go to their home, their dog jumps up on me. I'm great with animals, but I don't want anybody jumping up on me. I I always try to push them down. No, it's rude. 
I mean, yeah, you wouldn't walk into somebody's house or, uh, and the person grabs you and hugs you and kisses you and <sighs> well, Nikki, crazy. Nikki's like a little t- little dog. He's about seventeen pounds, and he thinks he's from the circus, so he's always jumping around like that. But when it's a larger dog, that's a whole other story. Right, but right. Th- but that's a whole other story. Little ones, you don't even realize because it's like, what is this? Oh, there's a dog on my leg. It weighs a, a, like nothing. But what bothers me in getting onto this thing is when people walk their dogs off leash and they say, oh, no, my, my dog would never do that. Oh, what if there is a cat or what if there's some, somebody drops by his grilling steak or get the dog gets distracted, runs in the street, boom, gets hit. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been at that so many times where someone said, Oh yeah, my kid left the, the, the fence open. The Terrible. dog got hit. Now this poor dog is suffering and it's going to cause the family to suffer by the sympathy and the, the medical attention it need, the dog needs. All because of just somebody wasn't careful with things. Right. And I hate when people, when they don't know the dog, will just go to pet it. The right way, you let the dog smell you. Right. Unless, you know, it's a little dog and even little dogs. Even little dogs. My friend, my friend got nipped from you. a little dog. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. You but know how people, they go, hi, how are you? They shake hands or, or you know, in some cultures, bow or... You know, French, they do the side kiss, kiss, whatever. Well, usually that's once you've been introduced, so not right away. But, you know, it's like saying, how do you do to a dog? You let them smell your hands. You put the hand out or you put it in a fist so it doesn't have anything to grab onto, like a finger, and you just let them smell you. I think animals could sense. I that's mean, it. But when people are afraid, they're afraid. And whatever their deal is from childhood, I don't push anybody they have to come to it on their own. I don't. Yeah, for sure. I I don't have any problem with any dog, you know. But there are some dogs that you know maybe just don't like like you. I mean, it's the same thing with people. But I want to talk about this. What I've been seeing lately, which is driving me crazy. I think it's the most ridiculous thing. Good business for whoever invented it. But these strollers to put these little dogs in. I mean, it's like an accessory. Like you're going to put them in your pocketbook. Now you're going to put them in a stroller. You're going to walk them down the street. You know, I mean, I know some people say, well, they got little feet, so they can't really walk a lot. I don't think so. That's ridiculous. I, I, I kind of have the same opinion that you do. I, but I've always had bigger dogs. Yes. So, but. The, the whole stroller thing, I think it's a substitute, you know. It, it's kind of, I think these are people that want the dog to be their baby. They're like their baby. Well, they I go, hold my cutie. My fur kids are my fur kids. They're my babies. But a baby baby. Like, let me wheel my little baby. I, and I don't think, I don't think it's the best for the dog. I don't think these dogs love going. I've seen them in clothes stores, at malls. I don't think that the, the dogs love them. And I've also seen people abuse taking them into places, like taking them into a clothing store when, you know, it's not a working dog, but right. you're taking them, I see them carry into them the clothing in. store. And even though the people, you know, at the clothing store might not say anything because they want the sale, what about everybody else there? And what if right. your dog decides to just take a pee or a poop? Because it could happen. Well, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm, I don't care about that. I'm, that's their issue. I'm just talking about I think it's disrespectful. I don't want to see dogs. I mean, it's a dog. It's not, I mean, in a carriage. It's crazy. I saw online, I think it was uh, a couple of months ago, it was really very cute. This guy was walking his German Shepherd, and the German Shepherd jumped on his back, and he carried the German Shepherd, and the German Shepherd was looking at all the dogs walking by, and all the dogs walking by were looking at him. It was the cutest thing. I mean, it was it was loving. But, I mean, we're talking about a big German Shepherd. I love those dogs. Do you like German Shepherds? That was my first dog. I never had one, but they are just so regal looking. Yeah, you know, Rin Tin Tin. They're great dogs for for searches. They are, they do a lot of search and rescue. There are a lot of canine um, K dash nine police dogs. Well, first and it was and first smart. it was first it was the German Shepherd, and then it was you know um, Retrievers, probably no the Doberman. No, do, as far as dogs that. They kind of, people feared, you know, or, or respected or, you know, gave counsel to because, the, you know, they were big dogs, big, strong dogs. 
Dobermans. I love Dobermans. And then, you know, they have these pit bulls now and these Rottweilers. I mean, I, 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 n- I never had a pit bull or a Rottweiler. I did meet one pit bull that I thought was the most beautiful dog, the friendliest dog. I had no anxiety around it, but Rottweilers, they just... They just look like stormtroopers with that face. Rottweilers look like, give me, give, let me have a chunk of you. They got that. But they're really sweet dogs. They're, they're smart. They're, they make good watchdogs. But they're, they have, a, they come with a lot well, of power. You here's gotta be strong. Here's something talking about weird things and that kind of stuff. I never knew this existed until I was looking after my first dog that I came across the country with me from, uh, Los Angeles, after she passed, I went and got Mr. Z. And when I was getting him, I wanted the same border collie mix. I wanted, I like black dogs. I wanted a black dog mix. I just did. And I saw this sign up, join the Black Velvet Club. And I thought, what the heck is the Black Velvet Club? Like, is it an underground place? People with dogs? And you go, what's Black Velvet Club? I mean, that is, is it, I knew it couldn't be something kinky because it's in the humane society, you know? And I asked someone about what's, what's the Black Velvet Club? And the woman there said, well, people don't adopt black dogs as much as they adopt the yeah, white or the tan. Yeah, my girlfriend, she had some- a hard time with this black kitten. You know, I had a black cat, but you know what? She ended up last week, somebody adopted. They, they are beautiful animals. I don't care. You know, the same thing. But the thing is, I, what's well, the difference? Well, now we're going to worry about color in an animal. Could you believe it? What's the difference? I... I just think with white dogs, you end up seeing like their pink belly all the time when they, and maybe because I wear more black jeans. And well, there are all breeds that the don't hair shed. Blends in. I just happen to like, I've always liked black border collie mixes and that's what every, every dog when, when well, I Well, I had one, a try, I had a try color collie and. But what's the diff? What is it with the color? What is it? What is that? How, in, I mean, what does that make a difference? No, but you were just saying the black velvet club. Right. What does that make? They said they made this black velvet club. Well, they wanted to make a club, so they made it up. No, but they, they did that so more people adopt black dogs. Why not? Well, maybe because, it, look, every, everybody wants to join something that they can't get into. It was, well, no, they just did this because they were trying to stir up some interest because well, did people it work? adopt, I guess, the other colors of dogs more Are they than, still in existence? No, I didn't join, so I have no idea. I'm a member anyways. I think you're an honorary member if you have a black dog. So I'm probably a member. And Mr. Z is black with a white cross on his chest. I think they say a black dog is something that truckers who have been on the road too long see. What? Black dogs and truckers? They have a thing. You having cocktails back there, Cheryl Kay? No, they have a thing that when truckers are on the road too long, going too long, and they're tired, that they imagine a black dog. It's like a thing. I've I've heard of it before. I've never heard of that before. I've heard about. Well, we're going to check into it. We'll now, check into it. Now, Wait, I think Michelle, there's an alcohol called Black Dog. Maybe there might be. Oh no, it might even be a beer. Michelle, while you're here, why don't you tell us? You know, one of my friends just adopted a black lab mix. Talking about black, you know, maybe we should do a show on only different all black animals, white animals. Beige animals. <laughs> what color do you got? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to well, tell okay. you something that about, I tried. I want to finish. Let me finish. Finish. She finish. just got a black lab mix and she mentioned, she said she, he, she fell in love with them at first sight and he has some skin problems. Don't, in on your show, don't you have somebody that, that has um, some solutions for uh, skin for a dog? I've had a lot of different products on my show. Um, there's, I've been doing this show for six years, so there's a lot of products. One of my favorites, and I have a lot of favorites, but one that comes to mind that I, I've used like over and over and over and over again is Earth Bath. I've had the owner, CEO, jack of all trades, Paul, on my show a few, couple times, and Earth Bath makes wipes for cats and dogs and puppies, so you can use that in between washes. They also make a lot of – their product is so natural. Paul told me he uses it himself on the shampoo and the conditioner. What about for a dog they that has a They have it for sensitive skin. skin. 
That's There's oatmeal shampoos. I think they, that Earth Bath has for sensitive skin. <clears throat> they have a shed, like a shed control shampoo and conditioner, and their products. Does are that just, really work? Yes, big time. Because Mister Z can shed a dog and a half. You know, he can. He's he's long hair. He can I know. Shed, when, you when, know. When I when I brush Daniel Boone, I could. I have enough. I have enough for a sweater. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Mr. And in Z the summer, they shed more. Animals shed more in the summer, don't you think? Well, they go through shed times, and that's when I see the tumbleweeds. There's a summer shedding, you know, where they go well, through their I shedding like and a winter I shedding. I like that word, tumbleweed. Summer coat and winter coat. I like yeah. that word, tumbleweed. Yeah, they, they're like to hair tumbleweeds. and Yeah, I have those. Yeah, huh. and you just go, where did that come from? There's this little pile or and then when they when they go through their summer coat and winter coat, that's when you see major tumbleweeds. Yeah. Like, well, I have a clipper. I'm just not comfortable using it. If I felt comfortable using it, I would clip Daniel Boone on my own. I mean, it's not like he's going on television, so who would see him? But I would. Okay, what have you, you ever do? done that? Yes, that's when we were talking about hair. This isn't a, pro- a whole product plug or anything, but I do love Earth Bath. But wall clippers, and they're W-A-H-L, they come with a little guide, and you can put the guide on and shave the hair. And they work, like, fabulous if you don't uh, know what I you're watched, doing. I watched a great. YouTube show, and this cat, as soon as he saw the clipper, laid down. He was a Maine Coon. He laid down because he's probably been doing it for years. That's not going to happen with Daniel Boone. He is not going to be... Okay, you know. No, you have to harness them because the dentist wouldn't lay this down. This guy didn't harness. This guy, this this cat laid on the ground on his side. He loved it. Maybe he was drugged. He didn't look drugged, though. He, he probably look- got a treat after and has been doing this like a bazillion times. So uh, what then kind of after treat? a bazillion times. What kind of just- treat can you give a cat to get him in the pool or to get him shaved? It would have to be chicken liver, chicken leg, chicken heart. A breast of chicken, salmon, shrimp. You There's have a to- ton of things. Well, the dentist likes to eat dog food, which is bad for him, but he, he's on a special diet. He he um, had issue at one time, so let's just say we can call him Denise, but we call him the dentist. But there's some and cats are actually really smart, and you can train them. My cat Daniel Bode sits. He comes. He sits. See. But yeah, and you know what I want to just tell you what what I noticed. I had heard about it, and I see it. You know, animals respond to our facial expression whether we smile, we're happy, we're sad. They they look at you, and they could tell what's going on with you. It's it's amazing. You know, if you blink your eyes, because I do this, it's like flirting with a cat. You close your that. eyes, you're open it. You that. close your eyes, you're open it. I could get my cat. To go to sleep if I wanted to take the time to spend, you know, sitting there <laughs> blinking. close. Blinking, opening, blinking, opening, blinking, <laughs> opening. Well, Michelle, I want to thank you for coming today. I like this little banter that we do. Let's get together more often. Sure. To all my listeners, I want to thank you for stopping in. I want to remind you that I'm going to be opening up the Facebook page, Unleashed. And I want to see all of the pictures of your pets' names. It'll be so much fun. I want to say thank you to Michelle. Thank you to our producer, Mark. And remember, live life unleashed. Till the next time. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.